Welcome to the AP Systems ECUR Gateway Installation and Setup video series. In this series, installers will learn about the ECUR Gateway, features, and commissioning procedure. Before starting the actual installation, be sure you're registered with AP Systems as a certified installer. If you're not a registered AP Systems installer, visit our EMA registration page and click on the register link under the resources tab to fill out the form requesting installer registration. Keep in mind that AP Systems requires all its installation partners to be licensed solar contractors and undergo AP Systems product installation training prior to providing them with an EMA installer account. The EMA, which stands for Energy Monitoring and Analysis, is the AP Systems cloud platform for recording and displaying the solar system performance. Once commissioned, the ECU, or Energy Communication Unit, will act as the gateway between the microinverters and the EMA platform, allowing installers and end users to see the solar array power production from any internet connected computer or smartphone. The ECUR is compatible with AP Systems YC600, YC1000, and QS1 microinverters. Since the YC600 and QS1 share the same AC output connector, they can be used in tandem on the same circuit and only require a single gateway. The ECUR is typically used in residential applications where consumption monitoring is not required. If the application requires consumption monitoring, we recommend using the ECUC gateway. Now, let's go over some of the tools you'll need to complete your ECUR installation. If you choose to wall mount the unit, you'll need two drywall screws or wall anchors and a drill or screwdriver. You'll also need a smartphone with the AP Systems ECU app installed. Simply visit the App Store for Apple iOS or Google Play Store for your Android devices and search for ECU app to download the application. Other things you will need include an available broadband internet connection, such as a port on your router, and access to a standard AC electrical outlet to power the unit. Inside the ECUR box, you will find an ethernet cable, power cord, two interchangeable antennas, one must be used for Zigbee, the other can be optionally used for Wi-Fi. We will cover those more in our next video. And the ECUR gateway. You will also find a printed installation manual and a quick start guide, which are helpful references during the actual installation. Let's take a look at some ECUR features. On the top of the ECU, you will see two LEDs. The top LED indicates the unit is supplied with power and functioning. The bottom LED indicates the unit is connected to the server. On the back of the unit from left to right, you'll find a reset button, the Wi-Fi antenna jack, the power connection port, an RJ45 RS485 port, an RJ45 Ethernet network port, and the Zigbee antenna jack. To reset the unit, Hold the reset button for at least 3 seconds and the unit will reboot. Keep in mind that this will return the ECUR to the default settings including resetting the password to 88888888 or 8 eights. Please note the RS485 port or the left of the two RJ45 ports is only used in select global markets such as Australia Unless otherwise instructed by your installation manual, use only the RJ45 port for completing your LAN Ethernet cable connection. On the side of the unit, you will also find a SIM card slot and a USB port for future feature enhancements and compatibility. The AP button activates a wireless signal broadcast, enabling connection to the ECUR using the ECU app smartphone application. The signal broadcast will deactivate after one hour for security reasons, after which the installer can simply press the button again to reactivate the signal. A quick note about Zigbee. 
Due to the volume of data points transmitted and collected in today's solar PV systems, many manufacturers have transitioned to high-speed data communication platforms like Zigbee. The ECUR utilizes a 2.4 GHz Zigbee protocol to create a mesh network with its microinverters. This allows the microinverters to communicate data not just directly with the ECU, but through other microinverter units in order to quickly and more reliably transmit information back to the ECU. The resulting speed is up to three times faster than Powerline Communication, or PLC, which is helpful given the volume of information communicated to and from the microinverters, the ECU, and the EMA platform. In preparing to install the ECUR, be sure to have the following necessary components available. A dedicated standard AC electrical outlet located as close to the array as possible. A broadband internet connection available for use. A broadband router with a Cat5 ethernet connection or a wireless router. If you choose the wireless option, be sure to obtain the wireless router password from the home or site owner before installing the ECU. A smartphone with the AP Systems ECU app installed. Please note, you must have a smartphone with Wi-Fi capability in order to complete your ECUR installation. When selecting an installation location for the ECUR, choose a location close to the homeowner's router. More on that in a bit. Be aware, the ECUR is not rated for outdoor use. If your site requires installation outdoors, such as near a junction box or breaker panel, be sure to enclose it in a weatherproof IP24 or NEMA 3R or higher electrical box. Once you've chosen a good location for the ECUR, it's time to make the connections necessary for operation, including power, communication to the microinverters, and the communication to the internet. Before connecting the power, install one of the included antennas to the Zigbee port on the ECU. The ECUR comes with two identical antennas, either of which can be connected to the Zigbee port or the Wi-Fi port on the unit. You may choose to use an antenna extension which can be mounted in a convenient location and which have a lengthy cable so if the ECU is installed inside an enclosure, the leads can be run through a grommet for antenna placement outside the box. For some sites, this may enable better communication to the inverters. Next, install the Ethernet cable from the router to the right RJ45 port labeled RJ45 Internet. Please note that the left RS485 port is only for DRMO use in Australia and plugging it into the Ethernet cable there will not enable the necessary Internet connection. Whenever possible, Always use a wired Ethernet connection to the router for the fastest, most reliable Internet connection to the gateway. For convenience, the ECUR has integrated Wi-Fi capability, which should only be used when a wired Ethernet connection is not possible. We'll cover how to connect the ECU to Wi-Fi in our next video. Once the communication connections are made, plug in the power adapter to the power connection port on the ECU, then plug the adapter into the nearby AC outlet. Once power is connected, the ECU will boot up, connect to the AP system server if an internet connection is present, and download any available updates. Since updates can sometimes take a while, it is recommended that the mounting and connection process be completed fairly early on in the solar array installation so that the unit has time to receive and install all available updates. Bear in mind that whether the ECU is off or installing updates, it will not affect microinverter power conversion or solar array production. However, the recording and transmitting of production data, in other words, the digital record of how much energy you are producing, will not be possible until the ECU is fully updated and operating normally. Before you can interface with the ECUR using your smartphone, you must first download the app available from the App Store on the iOS platform or Google Play Store on the Android platform by searching for ECU app or AP Systems 
no spaces, and looking for the familiar AP Systems icon and the letters ECU. This should not be confused with the EMA app, which system owners will later use to view their power production from their smartphone. Before opening the app, first connect to the ECUR's wireless signal using the following steps. Press the AP button located on the side of the ECU. This will enable connectivity to the unit using your smartphone. Again, this feature deactivates after one hour for security reasons. Open the Wi-Fi setting on your smartphone and select ECUR, etc. from the list of available wireless devices. You'll be prompted to enter a password, which is 8888888888 or 88s, and then connect. Some phones may display an error message saying they're unable to connect to the internet through the Wi-Fi device. Just click OK. Once the connection is complete, open the ECU app. If your phone is connected to the ECU, a green light with the word Connected will appear on the app home screen just below the system output power. If the screen doesn't show a connection, try touching the screen and pulling down on it, then release it to refresh the app. The app should show the ECU ID beginning with 2. A gray light indicates the phone is not connected to the ECU R. If this is your first time configuring this ECU, you must first set the date and time before scanning inverter UID serial number codes. To do this, go to Settings, which is located on the bottom right of the home screen. Touch the option for Date, Time, and then set both the date and the time so that they're current with your time zone. If a wired Ethernet connection is not available and the installer chooses to use the Wi-Fi function to connect the ECU to the Internet, touch the WLAN option under Settings and look for the homeowner or site's wireless signal broadcast. Enter the password and touch Send. You may need to obtain this wireless password from the home or site owner. Please note, once this operation is complete, the ECUR may reboot. You may also need to reconnect to the ECUR after it reboots to complete the setup and commissioning process. You may need to press the AP button again to enable connectivity to your smartphone. Under the WLAN settings, you'll have the option of changing the hotspot password, which is the password you use to connect your phone to the ECU. You would enter the old password, which again is 8 8 and provide a new one that would be kept in your company records. The LAN or wired network setting has two options. The first is to automatically obtain an IP address. This is the default setting for the inverter. The second option is to choose a fixed IP address and user specified settings. This option is only recommended for installation professionals who are familiar with these settings. If you're not familiar with changing these settings, be sure to toggle the option Obtain an IP address automatically. This information is also available in the ECUR installation manual that comes with your ECU or located in the resource library at apsystems.com. Depending on your region, you may also be able to select the grid profile of the country or region where the array is located or select specific grid requirements. Now that your date, time, and connection settings are complete, you can now add microinverter UID serial numbers to your ECU so that the ECU knows which inverters it will be receiving and transmitting data with. To do this, go to the settings and select the first option, ID management. The app will first sync with the ECUR to determine the UIDs that have already been entered into the ECU. Many installers choose to pre-configure their ECUs with site-specific inverter UIDs prior to leaving the job site in order to save time during the ECU setup. If the app automatically finds all the inverters present in the array, the ECU is fully loaded with all the necessary UIDs and no syncing is required. If all the inverter UIDs do not appear, 
you may have to scan or manually enter them before syncing with the ECU. To scan the UIDs, simply touch the scan button at the bottom. The app may request access to your camera. Simply align the barcode on the microinverter within the frame to scan the UID. Bear in mind the app scans quickly, so if you linger on a barcode, it may scan it again and then tell you the number already exists. You can verify a successful scan by looking in the list for the UID serial numbers. To manually enter a UID number, click on the input UID field just above the bottom options and enter the 12-digit microinverter UID number. Add the new UID to the list. After all the array UIDs appear on the ID management screen, select them using the box to the right of each UID and touch Sync. The app will ask you to confirm replacement. If a UID was missed, simply enter or scan the UID, select its box, and touch Sync to add it to the ECUR. Likewise, if a UID serial number was synced in error, you can select that UID, click Delete, which removes the UID from the ECUR. After all the microinverter UIDs are synced to the ECUR, go to the home screen and verify the number of microinverter units displayed next to the microinverter icon is correct. If you synced 12 inverters, the number 0 over 12 should be displayed here. This means 12 inverters are present, with 0 talking. The inverters will begin communicating once power is supplied by the solar panels. If the correct number of inverters is not displayed, you'll need to return to the ID management screen and verify the UIDs to determine which units are not present and add them. Likewise, if there are more UIDs than there should be, simply find the UIDs which do not belong and remove them using the process we just covered. Once the UIDs are synced and verified, and the DC connections on the array are made, the ECU will begin receiving real-time production data from the inverters. The ECU app displays this information on the data screen, including module-level power production. To verify connection to the microinverters, click on the real-time data option and you'll see each PV module as well as the last few digits of each microinverter serving those modules. Once all the PV modules and microinverters are connected, the module icon will turn green when AC power is applied and will display a wattage when they are producing power. If any display is gray, the installer should check the UID serial numbers they entered and synced for accuracy before checking cabling connections between the inverter and the AC bus trunk cable and between the inverter and the PV modules. The app also displays the power production curve for each day, as well as the overall energy production for the current week, month, and year. Keep in mind that this data is only available on this app while the phone is Wi-Fi connected to this ECU. Home and system owners can view their system data from any internet-connected smartphone using the separate EMA app. This is the primary mobile platform for viewing AP Systems inverter production data. However, system owners who do not employ an internet connection at their installation site can still view system production data using this direct Wi-Fi connection and the ECU app. With everything completed at the job site, there are a few final steps required in order to complete the commissioning of the system. The microinverters at the site are producing power and communicating with the ECU. It's now time for the installer to add this ECU to their EMA account for management, which may include future monitoring, maintenance, and troubleshooting. Installers must log in to the AP Systems EMA site at apsystemsema.com. As a reminder, if you don't have an account or are unfamiliar with how to navigate the EMA site, you must contact AP Systems to request a professional installer account and receive training. More on the EMA will be covered later in our detailed EMA video. However, this video will quickly take you through the steps to get the site active in the EMA. 
We encourage installers unfamiliar with this process to contact our technical support team for further training and also view the more detailed EMA video. Once logged in, installers will access the registration tab which will conveniently walk you through the new customer registration process, which consists of five steps. First, the installer enters the customer's personal information, which includes their name, address, email, and other details, as well as a username and password assigned by the installer. The system owner will later use this username and password to access their system production information in the EMA portal, online, and on the mobile app. Next, the installer adds the ECU UID number from the recent installation by clicking the Add button on the ECU Info step. The installer then enters the 12-digit ECU UID, which is the topmost barcode located on the back or bottom of the ECU, typically beginning with a 2. Take care when entering this number, as an incorrect ECU number entry will not enable communication with the site. Keep in mind that this is not the device IP address, but a unique serial number assigned by AP Systems to locate the device. Enter the time zone and click Next. In this next step, you can choose to import the inverter UID numbers you previously synced to the ECU or to enter them manually. To import them, click the Add button and use the Import from ECU tab ensuring the correct ECU is chosen from the drop-down before clicking Insert ID to List. Keep in mind that this option will not be possible for sites that are not connected to the Internet. The UIDs then display on a temporary list for installer review. If everything is deemed accurate, the installer clicks Submit to finalize the list of UIDs. UIDs on the list can later be edited or replaced as needed. Click Next to go to Step 4, Group View, to configure the installation layout. Here you can elect to manually create a layout view or to have the system create a layout for you. Simply select the ECU from the drop-down, enter the parameters, such as the number of rows and columns, and click Create. Whether the system creates a layout for you, or you make one yourself, New rows and columns can be added and modules can be edited to reflect the layout of the array at the installation site. In this interface, you can drag and drop as well as right-click for more layout options. Once you're satisfied with the layout view and the microinverters are associated with the correct PV modules, hit Next to add a site layout drawing or image. Otherwise, hit Complete Registration to finalize the customer's system setup in the EMA. Once again, not all EMA use instructions are covered in this video. We highly encourage you to watch our detailed EMA video and read our EMA user guide for more information on EMA system use, including the finer details of new customer registration not covered here such as the process for manual entry of inverter UIDs, how to add or replace inverters on existing sites, definitions of certain settings, parameters and available tick boxes, as well as site maintenance and troubleshooting options. There is a tremendous amount of functionality available to installers who utilize AP Systems' robust EMA platform. As a general rule, if you're not sure what a particular setting or selection does, it's best to leave it alone until you understand its function. That way, installers do not inadvertently change site settings or configurations which may adversely affect inverter performance. If you have any questions about these process steps, please see our document library at apsystems.com or our extensive installation video library on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash apsystemssolar. If you can't find the answer to your questions in these available materials, contact AP Systems Technical Support Team at apsystems.com. Thank you for watching and good luck on your installation.